Women Who Own It podcast spotlights women business owners who are pioneers in their field, setting trends, blazing trails, and creating game-changing innovations. Brought to you by WeBank, the largest certifier of women-owned businesses in the U.S. and a leading advocate for women business owners and entrepreneurs. And me, Allison Maslins. I've been a business owner for the last 35 years. I'm the Wall Street Journal best-selling author of the book, Scale or Fail. So join our bold community of women who built it, grew it, and own it. I'll see you on the show. Welcome to Women Who Own It, the podcast brought to you by Women Business Enterprise National Council, the largest certifier of business women in the United States. We are bringing you amazing women business leaders by business leaders, and we are so excited that you are joining us today. I am your host, Allison Maslin. I am the CEO and founder of Pinnacle Global Network, where we mentor business owners all over the world to grow and scale. So let me introduce our guest today. I'm so excited that we have her on in this topic. I'm just dying to hear what she has to say. Monica King is a creative educator who is transforming today's workforce through the power of creativity. As the founder and CEO of Innovators Box, Monica teaches creativity in tangible, practical, and relatable ways regardless of the industry or job title. She has worked with clients worldwide, including Fortune 500 companies, higher education, government, and nonprofits. Monica's work has been awarded through numerous platforms, including the White House, uh, Ashoka Changemakers, National Minority Supplier Development Council, and Women Business Enterprise National Council, WeBank, which is bringing you the show today. And she's the author of Rethink Creativity, How to Innovate, Inspire, and Thrive at Work. Monica, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. Well, man, if we ever had a time that we need creativity, it is right now, right? Uh, I would imagine that um, you are in big demand right now. So, but I want to dive into that. Can you just share, you know, how did you uh, get to this place? What inspired you to help uh, have a business around inspiring others? Thank you for having me. And, you know, it's such a pleasure. WeBank is such a special community. And so it's an honor to be able to share my story and be part of this conversation. Uh, I think often as entrepreneurs, it's important to think about why we do what we do, which is going back to what problem are we solving? And in my case, Innovators Box was really born because I wanted to solve my pain point. Uh, being in a job I loved, but felt stuck and depressed. And in fact, often crying my finding myself crying to work at times and feeling confused about that. Um, my former expertise was in nuclear weapon security and public policy. I was in the government nonprofit space, which is why I'm still in Washington, DC. Uh, and I wanted to be a diplomat for a long time, which is how committed I was in the field. And yet I found that I got quite stuck um, until what really helped me get out of it was rekindling my creative mindset. And that led me to the business part because I realized it's not that, you know, just learning about it online is going to help me get there, but realizing that the mindset shift was a key part. And mm -hmm. a lot of the tools that I read or saw out there was really more formulaic, um, kind of uh, process driven that really was not reflective of the human equation. And that's where I thought thinking about what well, if I know some parts of it, how can I learn more? and help more people understand that they don't have to be boxed in any way and unlock their creativity and how that would help not only thrive wherever they are as an individual, as a team and a company, and hopefully as a society, because I know that public policy lens was where I started my career. So, yeah. And how That's different it. from public policy to helping people get creative, it's very different. So um, helping people. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, and so thanks for sharing that. And what do you, why do you think, Monica, that businesses, you know, the teams, the CEO get stuck 
in their creativity. I mean, we start out, we're young, we're into, right, coloring and pretending and so forth, but it seems like it becomes really hard for us as we get older. I think uh, a couple of things that happen, which is one, we get used to having the wrong impression of what creativity is. I mean, even in your quick example of coloring and, uh, you know, thinking of different scenarios, yes, that's part of creativity. But at the essence of creativity, it really means of just thinking differently, having the courage to share a different perspective, finding dots in different ways. That's business nonstop. And yet we often don't credit enough of that or understand. And so often our wrong impression of what creativity and innovation is blinds us from recognizing and celebrating that more and making room for it, which is, I think, number one obstacle. Number two is then going back to, I think, the order we get, we get used to, you know, conforming ourselves about what life and kind of career should be. So, you know, as the boss, you shouldn't be doing X, Y, Z, because that's not, that's not executive level. Or, you know, if you're in school, you should be answering your multiple choice question answer. You shouldn't be doodling in your assignments. And that frowned upon of like, oh, you shouldn't do this. You should do it this way. Kind of have us conform over time and stop making us explore what else can we do and what does it really mean for us to do in our own voice and that's where i think when we get to the workplace we not only got so got used to boxing ourselves of this is what it means to be have a successful career this is what i've been told what it means to be a good ceo that we stop exploring like what does it actually mean for you i mean allison for you to be an amazing ceo you uniquely doing that in your creative ways when it's at its peak not when you're a cookie cutter trying to copy somebody else and that's exactly one of the things I probably assume which you're sharing with others. And I think we often underestimate that that's when we're at the creative inside, uh, creative peak of it that we forget. So especially for it's example, the most fun. it's mm -hmm. the most fun part of business. You know, I love doing those, uh, you know, trying new things and exploring and innovating and opening new doors. I think it's really powerful. But what do you think it really takes to, um, you know, within a business, what does it take to open up space for the creativity and then innovation to happen? So as I just mentioned, because a lot of us over time have stopped doing it, um, it takes a bit of practice. I mean, imagine that you suddenly have to run for a marathon and you've never ran before. Um, you're not going to be able to do it immediately. You're going to need some practice. You need space. You need to embed it in your routine. Um, if you want to be healthier, uh, to eat healthier, you just have to think about how you exercise, sleep better, eat better. If that's how much thinking we put in for a physical muscle, how much thoughtfulness would you have to put for your creative muscle? And as a company, you want to think about your holistic business operation, about your creative business muscle. Um, that's where it's not just simply a statement of saying, hey, we want to be innovative with this blanket statement. We want to think about holistically, are you actually giving room in your team members to, for them to feel courageous to share a different opinion? Um, and for that to happen, uh, going, Allison, to your question, they have to then have psychological safety. Do they feel safe to share different ideas? Uh, do they feel confident about being themselves, that self-awareness? Uh, do they ha feel that this company culture supports them to be fully who they are and ideate and grow? Because if that is not there, um, no matter how many, many amazing ideas an individual has or as a team, why bother sharing it? Because you're going to be shut down. Somebody's going to reject it. Somebody's going to criticize you. And so your human gut reaction is, well, I'm not going to do it because nobody's going to appreciate it. And so from the executive level, you absolutely want to think about, am I giving all that space? Not just word, but the true talk from your action, but also from the holistic level that is systematically showing consistently. And I think we often say that we are, but if you really go down all the way to the bottom line from the intern level to the manager and the executive, it's not consistent and that's where the gap is. And so courage, self-awareness, psychological safety and culture ends up being a core element to really breathe and create space for creativity in a company. Wow. You said so much there that really rang true for me. That's so powerful. And hey, I've been guilty of it. You know, I mean, we help business owners grow and I've had team members come to me and, and immediately, you, you know, if someone brings you an idea, if, you know, you might say, oh, no, that wouldn't work or we've done that before and that didn't work. And I've had to learn over the years to really stop myself and say, wait a minute, let's open it with new ears uh, because what is the impetus for them to keep coming to you? 
if you're gonna if you're gonna tell them it doesn't work. Um, but I, I think we do as a business owner sometimes get afraid or you know am I gonna invest money in that and it doesn't work and so forth. But um, you know I agree with everything that you're saying and then I see that it really how it all of this ties to company culture. I would imagine that they this really goes hand in hand. And that's where as a leader, having that strong sense of self-awareness, as you just shared, that sense of self-awareness is a key part of you knowing how you can have the courage to open up that door, but knowing realistically with your self-awareness and your company awareness, okay, let's say uh, we are willing to take two um, project risks, even if it fails, would it still sustain the business? Because I mean, as an executive, you still have to think about your products um, and project profit margins and thinking through that as well as the human equation. Um, so I'm not saying that you completely ignore, but as an executive, you want to think about how holistically it ties together. And so it might be that, hey, that's such an amazing idea. Um, and because right now we have a tight timeline, I'm going to challenge you. Could you think of another way where we can still meet the deadline and still think of a different solution? Because I would love for you to own it if you're up to it, but I'm going to only let you do it. If you can own the full process, is that something that you can do? Oh, that's so great language shifting yes. makes not only now suddenly an empowerment for that person to own up and kind of step up instead of being stepped back and discouraged. And so it's reframing the thinking as a leader to think about not only am I creating space, but sharing that ownership. Um, and the second, it might be more of you acknowledging that fear. And like, guys, my gut instinct is at times for me to feel scared because I know last time we failed um, and I don't want to discourage you, but I want you to just be aware of that. If you can find a way that we can do this thing, but in a different way that we won't fail, I would love to know that. Could you share some ideas? Now they have the whole context and it doesn't become as just um, kind of defensive. And so that language I would also say is really important. Oh, that communication is, is everything. I liked how you said, oh, that's such a great idea. And, you know, instead of, but it's, and, and then give having, giving them ownership to take, you know, to take it and run with it. That's really powerful. Um, do you feel like that everyone has a capacity for creativity? You know, Absolutely. you do. Absolutely. It's like everyone can always be healthier. We never yeah. doubt. We can always read more. We can always learn more. It's something that we decide and it's something natural that we have. Yeah, I, th I think a lot of people don't feel that they are, you know, um, and it stops them from even exploring, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so, but mm -hmm. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's one of the questions that I do get asked a lot, which is, you know, is creativity innate or nurtured? And it's uh, one example that I love to share is that, you know, just like when we are born, we have certain physical features of a human body that makes us maybe certain people a better runner, a better swimmer, but that doesn't mean that I cannot learn how to swim. That does not mean that I don't, I won't learn how to run. Maybe I'm always going to be the last person in that uh, finish line, but I will absolutely learn how to run if I wanted to. Um, and so the second piece I often share for those who feel like, okay, Monica, that all sounds great, but I just really don't know if I'm creative, I'm analytic, I like my numbers better. Um, and I'll share with you, I think another misnomer that we have is about creativity is we often see art. I mean, I have some art here too, but we often see art entertainment as one form and forget that that is one of the billion trillion ways of how we express creativity. And your love for numbers as you're listening to this might be that that is your form of creativity. Yes. Because you think about numbers in such a fantastic, unique way, and that's how your brain is wired. But you have to acknowledge that. You have to know how it inspires you, because that's often the one that you lose track of time and you dive deeply into it. Uh, but the key is, just like our physical muscle, we only get better by doing more. And so even if you feel like no matter what level of creativity it is, if you are at a certain level, just like your physical muscle, the more you exercise, the better you become. And when you don't exercise, that's why it feels hard. Not because you don't have the capacity, it's because you just haven't used it in a long time. That's why, I mean, tell me algebra uh, or like calculus, I'm gonna suffer because I haven't done it since high school. Oh God, <laughs> not even go there. Just uh, 
Yeah, I, I mean, this is so fascinating. I, I love it. And, you know, you think of it, if you're going to come up with a new software, for instance, that's a form of innovation and creativity, which is, you know, very analytical. Um, what are some effects you've seen when businesses that you've worked with uh, start getting more creative that we're, are working with Innovators Box? Couple things. Uh, one, certainly see things more holistically because to be creative, you have to be self-aware. You have to feel safe, both physically, emotionally, psychologically. And so when that is met, whether it's through the workshops that we do, the curriculum development or the leadership programs, or just like being an innovation partner and helping them think more holistically, how they build an innovative culture, um, they realize that, yes, it might be that you have these 10 staff in your team members and you always thought, why is this person late? Why is this person always, you know, uh, kind of jumping in? You start reshifting that to think about, no, these 10 people have these different talents I'm the person in charge of creating that space. And from their side, they see with confidence and clarity how they contribute, which then shifts the whole energy of not only how they ideate, how they work together every day, how it feels to show up to the office. I mean, guys, like we all know what it feels like to show up to a meeting room that we just feel grudge as well as that we just so excited to show up. I mean, wouldn't it be nice to just show up to every meeting, every conversation, or at least most of it in your office, more excited and just looking forward to it instead of like dreading. Um, that's a huge shift because we hold on to those emotions, not just at work, but at home. So what I also think about the holistic is not just within a company, but what happens in all these individuals, because the creative mindset just doesn't stop at work. It's something that we live and integrate throughout our lives. And what excites me probably the most is not only when leaders implement this for their company growth, but see how that influences in their personal life. They have a happier life with their family. They think about how they shift their relationship within their friends and their business circles even because you become now more intentional. You become more thoughtful in thinking about how am I actually showing up? How am I being open-minded to all these different opinions that even I might not agree with? And staying open to those experiences and connecting the dots um, because we don't get new ideas by being in the same circle. We have to constantly go out to different things and learn those different things and be pursuing that. And so that shift of seeing that both in the business culture and hence the energy and the work they do and productivity, of course, but in that personal space, that I think is the huge thing that of empowerment, especially during this time of COVID-19, where we're thinking about there's, there's no separation and it never has been. We, yes. we kind of forgot about that. Yeah, well, I mean, speaking of everything that's going on in the world right now, I do have some questions about that. So first of all, you talk about going in the office. How do you feel like this impacts um, the teams that are now virtual? And some of them are, have made that shift and said, you know what, I'm going to stay virtual. But how do you feel like that that impacts innovation and creativity? Hmm. Virtual or in person is not as much of a problem if you feel safe with your team. Okay. And that's where, again, your creative culture, your mindset, and your leadership style is really the key piece. I mean, um, yeah, it doesn't matter whether it's virtual because your leader and your team would make you feel safe. Even if you have a um, crying, crying child, your dogs or cats are running around, um, you know which one are the meetings that you will absolutely feel embarrassed versus like, oh my gosh, this is such a funny moment, guys. We're going to laugh about this. Right. That right. moment is many moments like that that builds up where it, when you have that, that's when creativity and innovation is likely going to sustain and happen a lot more frequently. Yeah, Don't Gosh, that. That, that, that makes sense. You know, the connection is there if, if the people are feeling safe and comfortable. So I could see where this creativity and the innovation, of course, it helps business growth, but it also probably connects the team on a much deeper level. Because if the team is not connected, how, what are you actually innovating? You're not, you're just only using two, 3% of their talent. Right. Wow. Yeah. Well, we only use a small portion of our brain on a daily basis anyway. Um, but how, how are you helping business owners now? I mean, they've got to pivot. They've had to have some very unique ways of doing business, reaching their customers. Um, new revenue streams because the others have shut down. Um, how have you, how has your company been helping clients shift and pivot right now? 
And so with our specialty in creative mindset and really reframing this culture and leadership piece, we've been working really um, in three segments in particular. One, just really reminding everyone about re-educating the message of innovation and creativity so that they recognize that, as you mentioned, whether it's in the office or at home, how they can do that and why that's important. Um, number two, uh, so I've been doing that actually with a lot of content. We've been doing, I've been doing a lot of live shows. I just had two this week where I have my Monday shows and then I had an innovation unscripted, which is a talk show that I created to celebrate innovators from different walks of life um, to kind of break down the stereotypes and empower everyone how they are innovative and can. Um, the second piece is really the educational piece, which is our gem as well. And so we work with um, both uh, B2, B2B uh, and B2C, so like both companies and individuals, where the one of the frequent pain points right now is uh, is during the meetings, right? We're all spending more time virtually in these meetings and they are seeing visibly when they can't facilitate a good conversation or they're in a room that doesn't feel safely facilitated, the impact is even huger. And so I'm working directly both with individuals and companies who are really wanting to hash that if we are in 20, 30 hour meetings every week by rethinking facilitation through that creative lens and so that's been an empowerment because through that voice, what I'm really telling people is how you rethink about everything, including facilitation and how you speak, how you bring the energy in the room and how you hence do your projects to bring creativity and openness that actually celebrates in all these different opinions. Um, and the third piece uh, connects back to doing that in a larger scale, which a lot of the corporations who's come to me as well including Black Lives Matter and all these conversations, it's just been really hard to have difficult conversations and to even get work done. And so they're saying we need to feel safe and we need to feel creative, but we don't know how. And so I've been doing virtual workshops. I've been actually leading also uh, summit program development where I not only come as a keynote speaker or uh, workshop um, content, but really thinking through the holistic journey. Because I tell them, you know, whether it's a hundred people audience or 500, we got to treat them as people and that experience is just more than an event. Let me help you reframe that, which are all things I did offline, but now I'm bringing that intentionality of even virtual because we don't know how long this will be and acknowledging that anxiety of people feel, the fear that people feel is really critical if you want them to be creative and have the courage to try something different and take risk. Um, that, that's an emotional level of support and um, innovative thinking that is really key. And so I make all that fluffy kind of hard, kind of soft, I guess, aspect that people are not sure how to dive, uh, tying that to curriculum development, the events, and hence that, uh, that directly impacts the culture and leadership. And so those are some ways, and as well as the community, we're launching memberships and we've been doing some global meetups with 50, 100 plus people of just coming together and connecting on a human level. And so those are ways that we are reminding people how you are innovative and can be more and why we should absolutely make time for it because the more uncertain things are, there is absolutely ways that we can find limitless opportunity. Yeah, and I would think people need this now more than ever. What I'm finding with the business owners is that this is someone, it's like someone hit the fast forward button and all the things that they thought of doing, new projects and, and creativity, innovation, like now they're like, okay, now we're doing it. Like, you know, there is no waiting. And so I think that, that the excitement about that is that they're not gonna get so tripped up in the perfection of it, but actually move forward. Have you seen that? Mm. And I would also add, it's not uh, only having the courage to let go of perfectionism, but also just uh, making space for pause. I'll mm -hmm. say right now, if we take a step back, we've already gone through two waves. I feel like we're everyone's been projecting we're gonna see a third wave in the fall um, based on when this episode is gonna be released. Uh, and what happens often is when we lead our work and thinking as a leader with fear, it's we react mm, instead yeah. of respond. Yeah. Because when we react, we're not actually giving our brain breather room to process and understand and pause. But to actually innovate our brain, um, this is neuro, um, neuroscientists have proved this, that when you're innovating and being creative, it's not in your reactive state of brain. 
because you have to daydream, you have to wander and ponder and notice and pause and hmm, I wonder what can I do with this dot and that dot. That doesn't happen if you're in like constant execution mode, which I think is how we reacted when things were changing immediately because our gut instinct, of course, is to be problem solvers. Yeah. But that's not where the best idea comes. Sometimes it's just having the courage to realize because things are changing so fast, guys, let's give this week a bit of pause and take a moment to really think about what can we do differently? What would make sense? What do we let go of and not worry about? Yeah. That intentional moment could actually not only save you time for the next few months and weeks, what could happen, but help you actually be grounded and going back to your core why of what you're even doing um, to innovate in the direction that serves your stakeholders and especially as a business owner that aligns to the business that you're building and why you want it to do. So yeah, as I would say is critical. That's so powerful, Monica. And I think that, um, you know, we are in unprecedented times. We may not get this gift again, you know? I mean, the, the positive side of it, right? Of that pause. So taking and really taking advantage of this and, and asking those powerful questions. I love that. Now in your own business journey, um, and you had quite a shift, what do you feel as, uh, as a CEO, um, you know, using these processes to deal with challenges in your own business growth? How, how has that helped you navigate? I think that's one of my favorite, favorite thing because I get to implement everything that I share with others. Um, I, I mean, COVID-19 was a good example. As soon as it started hitting, I immediately started going back to all the principles that I preach, which is why am I doing what I do? What are my happy list? What are things that actually encourage me to see more with love and positivity instead of fear? What would actually help me respond versus react? Um, and how do I see constraint with abundance? Uh, because it's really in the mindset. Uh, the key with creativity, if you really break it down, and I think this is where people often see as obstacles because we see the flashiness of the arts and the world of entertainment distract us to see what else it could mean is that at the background, it's really understanding how your mind works. And so right now, I mean, we've all had a mind meltdown. I, we, we lost control of a lot of things. We had a lot of things that we had to change. We felt like we've been re you know, pushed. This is what you have to do and you can't do. But if you center around your mindset, you use that as a data point and then think about, okay, so this is now my new situation. What can I do with it? Instead of seeing that with fear mm -hmm. um, and seeing uncertainty. I'm like, okay, how do I navigate uncertainty in a different way? Hmm, I wonder why. I, I wonder what I can do with it. I notice this is how I feel or I, I'm aware this is where I, I am not sure about. And so those language choices, even though it seems small, I notice, I wonder, I, um, I, I, I'm curious, leaves you in a more curious state to respond instead of react with fear. And that's where you then explore creativity, openness, trying something new, but also helping you stay grounded because uncertainty, frankly, as entrepreneurs and business, I mean, we know it always is there. Yes. And it helps us go back to our elements. So I would say, I mean, this was just another reminder. I, I get to have the joy of walking my own talk every single day. And I was so grateful that I had those tools, both with books and resources. And I went back to my own slide and my own books to reread to help myself ground it because um, it's natural with our human reaction to gravitate to negativity and fear. That's mm -hmm. part of the science too. Um, and I was in another conversation where somebody said, you know, giving feedback is hard because you have to say nine compliments to outweigh the one negative comment. And if we're seeing negativity everywhere on the world, it's hard for us to find courage. And so being aware of that fact helped me then know what I needed to do, which is uh, the second, or I guess I lost track, but the second part that I was find it really important and I encourage everyone to think about is remembering that we become what we consume. Mm. And so if we are not surrounding ourselves with people who are creative, if we are not surrounding ourselves with things that inspire us to be creative or know how we can be creative, 
uh, of course we're not going to feel creative. <laughs> of course we won't know how to be creative. And as I saw my newsfeed filling up with fear-driven information, reactive information, um, I knew that I was getting more anxious. And so for me to monitor that, I stopped social media. I started unfollowing things. I, I started following other things that were positive, but not necessarily excluding, like I want to be aware of the news. Um, and those decisions influenced me to create that pause, but consume more positive things, reading more things that inspire me so that I had the courage to find creativity with that. Yeah, gosh, you are speaking my language. I love this and I love this, you know, uh, uh, approaching challenges with a sense of abundance. I mean, that's, you know, quite the opposite of, of how most people do. And whenever you react out of fear, you usually regret it later. Um, and so, and, and I've been doing, we've like, there's no news going on at our house. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you know, your brain is a very, um, it's something you should treasure and really protect. And uh, I don't think that most people think of it that way, uh, but really working on the mindset, as you say, it needs to be a regular practice. So thank Can you. Can I have one more example on that? If, if yeah. the, I feel like, okay, Monica mindset, that's cool. But I mean, how does that really work? I mean, I think another example is thinking about food. We can tell when you're healthy, when you eat healthy food, for like a month and only junk food for a month. Yeah. Ugh. Because we become what we consume physically. So yeah, if that's yeah. how it feels physically, I mean, think about mentally, we become what we consume. So if you're around negative energy, if you're around fear-driven reactive people, then no wonder that's influencing. And that's why in the workplace in general, when that's the type of energy you will have, it is absolutely not safe nor possible to be creative. And also if you have a group of people who all say they're not creative and that you can't be creative, it is understandable why we doesn't feel creative because we're around people like that. Yeah. So you go know, out to feel find that. You're around someone that's uplifting, like you feel that. You feel their energy. Absolutely. And when someone's draining, you just feel, oh. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So wow, this is definitely um inspiring me uh, to go back to some things. So thank you. Um, so WeBank, uh, which is, you know, bringing the show to us today. And, uh, you know, I've been a certified uh, WBE for several years now. And just wondering how has WeBank, your certification supported your growth in your business? I recommend for everyone, especially if you're looking to do more business to other with other businesses, whatever the size, it's an amazing community. Um, also, I think as the next gen in the advisory board, I wouldn't have stepped up in that role and play, wanted to contribute if unless I saw that value. And one of the things that, you know, other than the business opportunities and, you know, meeting the amazing people, I think what one thing that we bank really has that i incredibly value is i mean even through programs like this is just an emphasis of the community and this is such a key moment where you know covid 19 and all these changes this year has reminded us that at the end of the day the more people realize that it's not just about you it's about who you serve with who you live with who you work with um we're never alone and for us to know that there is a place that you don't feel alone is incredibly invaluable. Um, and I think many of us, we are in executive roles because we're also community builders and we are creating that within our company, within the spaces that we shift. And I mean, how amazing is it when you're around other people who are like that, who actually cares that and there is a safe space. And so I love that uh, this is that place. And uh, especially when things were hitting, like I felt like there were a lot of people, both from my business friends, a fellow entrepreneur friends or whether from the corporation friends that I could just immediately talk to more frankly with the business and personal challenges and opportunities because we got, we got each other and almost missing now because we used to see each other every year and now we can't. Oh, I know. Um, that community aspect, I would just emphasize. Um, I mean, yes, business opportunities, absolutely. Um, but I think that that community part is so invaluable and just knowing that you really care. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I love the community 
through WeBank and, and on so many levels. And, uh, and they really, when everything went down in March, they were offering and have continued to all kinds of support. So, um, so thank you for sharing that. Well, so w what's next for you? What are, are you, do you have some creative initiatives on the horizon here? Some things that you're excited about? I think uh, one thing as an innovator myself is trying to think about how do I, how do I stay present to what's going on right now and think about what could happen going forward in the future, which is the lens of thinking about the future. So you keep thinking ahead and problem solving ahead, but then keeping yourself grounded to be present because the present is constantly changing too. And in the fear of keep thinking forward, you might miss what's happening now to iterate what you might need to do in the future. And so that's one of the core things that has, I think, influenced hence what we are building now, which is, um, I think previously, a lot of the programs that I've been doing for uh, corporations and businesses, I didn't know a way how I can serve the community more directly or individuals. And actually, because it's virtual, now uh, already with some of the projects I've started, I'm reaching my global community a lot faster. And so that's been such an amazing opportunity. And so some of the events and projects that we've done, we already had at least at a bare minimum 30 plus countries join um, these events. And a lot of them, they've never heard of me or seen me. They just found their friend of a friend. And that validation really echoed that I have a bigger community of innovators that I need to serve. And I better make sure I have a solution because the cravingness of what they need is there. And I know how I can, but I just need to find the right how that amplifies them but also in the process that we can share the voice through them um, while we serve our corporate uh, and business customers as well. And so that's been a really fun kind of mindset on my side, because I think uh, I always felt like I had to let go of one if I did the one, because as a business owner, it's, it's often hard to juggle both, especially as a small team. And I, I think the virtual landscape actually made it even more possible. And so whether it's the summit, the membership, um, or even the amazing projects that we are doing with our company partners, I, I'm just really pumped up because I think now I can, I mean, right now, even in the, this month, this month in July, I've been doing at least 20, 30 hours of facilitation for about 100 to 200 people a week. Um, that would have been a lot harder if I had to travel. Yes. And I think finding more opportunities like that where I'm shifting my mindset to stay connected, to say, because of this situation, what are the yes and opportunities that I can help more people to amplify their voice, to help them find courage? Um, because anxiety level for everyone is rising. And I know creativity would absolutely be the secret sauce to give them more courage and curiosity and sanity, frankly, to yeah. think more in that openness. And so that's, that's where I'm heading. We'll see where the world goes, but we will be here to help you be creative and courageous, no matter where you are. Oh my gosh. All of those words are so powerful and fun, right? And adding obviously more fun, fun and inspiration. Is You're not yeah. having fun. That's a boring meeting. And we absolutely do not tolerate that. That is one of our rules. Yeah, it is not allowed. Absolutely. When you're talking about Innovators Box or uh, Monica Kang. So um, this has been really inspiring for me and I know for everybody else that's listening. So Monica, thank you for coming on here and sharing your brilliance uh, for all the, all the listeners here today, all the women who own it. Thank you so much. Honored to be here. And I hope it reminds you that you are all creative. You can be more creative. It's a decision you make, just like you decide what to eat, what to wear and what to do with your business. So I hope that gives you space and just practice. Give yourself at least five minutes a day, daydream, whether it's looking out even at the window, unplug, uh, or maybe it's reading something that inspires you, but you can all make me space. And hey, especially as a leader, you being creative is gonna be a multitude of effects because it's not just for your company, for your family, for how you show up. So do it for your sake, but know that there's, you're gonna have 10, 20 times the effect, especially as a leader. Wow. Yeah, your health, everything, um, your, your whole life. So this has been phenomenal. Thank you so, so much. And thank you all for listening to another edition of Women Who Own It. If you have not subscribed yet to this incredible podcast, definitely do it. You can find us on all platforms where there are podcasts. We're on iTunes. We're on Spotify. 
And if you enjoyed this episode, we would so appreciate if you would write a review and uh, you know that encourages others to listen to the Women Who Own It podcast. So until next time, uh, we honor you and all the amazing work that you're helping people uh, change their lives, those women who own it. Till next time. Bye, everybody. Thank you.